folks. So today we're going to look at how to process data from our Bradford lab. Uh, here I have the plate map from the protocol. We have our standards for BSA on the side. Uh, if you followed my direction, these are 0, 2, 5, 10, 15, and 18 micrograms per mil. And I'm just going to clean up all this other stuff we don't need. So I don't need this G stuff. So anything that says path in it, we can clear out. I'm just cleaning it up so it's easier for me to see it. I don't need any of this stuff. All right, so that's the stuff I need. So I'm going to just go ahead and call this the concentrations. In micrograms per mil. And I can double click up here to expand it to match our stuff. And you can see this is in triplicate. Now these guys are unknowns. So this is a unknown one, dilution one, unknown one, dilution two. And this is unknown two, dilution one, and unknown two, dilution two. So that's just keeping us straight on where we're, we're supposed to be on this thing. Uh, first thing we need to do here is to plot out our averages. Um, and so what I like to do usually is since these are all done in triplicate across the wells, you can see standard one, one, one on our plate map. I need to take the average across. So I'm just going to pick this piece up with the unknowns. I'm just going to cut it and move it over here. So I have some room to work. And then I can do my average over here. So equals average, do the average of these three wells. Those are my blanks. And I also need to do the standard deviation. So equals STDV, draw across. Neat. And I'll just drag those down so I fill. That looks good. So we have our average and standard deviation of our standards. I'll also want to do that for our unknowns. Equals average. And equals STDV. And then I'll just drag this all the way down. There's going to be an error in the middle. I'll just clear that out. This makes my life easier. Okay. So that's our averages. You can see our zero average is much less than our 18 average, and they're sequentially increasing, which is what you want to see. You also want to make sure that your averages for your unknowns are somewhere in the middle. You don't want them to be too low or too high. These look like they'll be perfectly kind of right here between 2 and 5, which is nice. Uh, we could just go ahead and plot this data, but I like to do blank subtraction. Zero does it absorbs all, um, on its own, and so I like to do the average minus the blank average. So I'll just start out clicking the average for the zero minus the average for the zero. The blank minus the blank should be zero. And then again, I want to go up here to the thing I'm subtracting, hit F4, or put dollar signs in front of the G and the four, and hit enter. And again, I expected my blank to be zero, so I'm going to draw that down. So you can see now that we go from between 0 and 1 or so, which is exactly what we want. Now we also want to do this over here on our unknowns. Again, we'll subtract our, we'll select our average minus the blank average. And I'll put some dollar signs around that and drag down. So you can see our blank subtracted averages are now here. Those are definitely between 0 and 1, which is, again, what we want to check. If there was negative or if they're greater than our highest one, we'll have to do another dilution and do the plate all over again, which can be annoying, but you just want to make that make sure that's there first before you move along. Um, all right, so now it's time to start plotting our data. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new XY scatter plot, and I'm going to add my data custom to that. So add a new legend entry. My X values are my concentrations. And my Y values are my blank subtracted averages for my standard curve. Cool. Looks nice. I'll get rid of some of this background. No vertical bars, no horizontal grid lines. Um, I'm just going to put a placeholder title. I'm just going to call this uh, Team Powders. Uh, standard curve. Remember, that doesn't actually stay on there when you submit the graph. Uh, it should be taken off by the time you uh, load it. Need to do a couple things here. We need to add axis titles on the y axis. This is actually an average, 
And so I would say corrected. And if you look up here, it actually tells you the, uh, the two wavelengths we did it at, 595 over 460, A595 over A460. Looks good. So that is our corrected absorbance at the ratio of 595 nanometers over the absorbance at 400 nanometers, or 460 nanometers, sorry. Good, so our y-axis is done, and our x-axis is our concentration of micrograms per mole. Okay, so it's looking good. Got my titles on there. I'm going to add a trend line by right-clicking on my data. Put my equation on the chart as a placeholder and my R squared. Uh, in this lab, you need to have at least 0.9. The higher, the better. My R squared is 0.9926, which is great. Um, and then again, we're going to use this in a second. I'm actually going to go ahead and write this down here. So I need my M and my B. My M here is 0 0.443, and my B is 0 0.15. 0 .15. Uh, this, ideally, this should go through zero. Um, so if you have a little bit of error on your y-intercept, that's okay. It just means that your uh, points are slightly off. And that's not going to be a huge problem uh, because it's that's what a standard curve is for. We could force this through zero, um, but that would might change our uh, our relationship. So we're just going to leave it this way. I'm going to go ahead and right click um, on my data set, and I want to add my. Oops, I don't want to right click. I can add error bars. Get rid of my horizontals, and then I want to do customs, custom error bars. Um, and what I did is right click on those, go to format error bars, and this popped up. I want to go down to custom. Specify value, select my standard deviations. Same selection for the negative error bars. And all right, that's good. So you can see I have a little bit of deviation from well to well on some of these guys. Um, and that looks good. So my zero point is plotted. Let's see what happens if we just get rid of that zero. All right. Our, um, our squared value actually went down a little bit. It's okay to include your zero because um, that's a, a legit piece of data that you read, uh, you measured. Uh, I don't care one way or the other. But here is our um, finished uh, standard curve for our Bradford. And again, we want that R squared value to be around 0.9 or greater. If it's less, you should go back and redo it. All right, so we have now a standard curve. We have an equation for our line for our standard curve using our standards. And now we're going to want to use that data here to come up with our unknowns. Okay, and I'm just going to copy my blanks down here. Oops. If you want to copy them, you should probably um, select them, hit normal copy. And then when you paste it, go to paste special and paste special values. And that'll keep it so that if there's any equations up here, like you see, they'll actually just be stripped out and leave you the number, which is nice. So those are our Y values. And so what we're trying to do here is trying to get our Y values, which you have, and we're trying to solve for where they are on the X. And if you do this, remember that the equation is Y equals MX plus B. If you solve for X, it is Y minus B divided by m equals x. Okay, and so that's the one we want to use here. So when we do our values, we're going to do equals y, parentheses first, equals y minus b. Now I want to put um, dollar signs on that one because I always have the same intercept. Divided by m. And again, I'll put dollar signs on that. So this is our concentration. solved concentration. Now I can just drag that down. All right. Sounds good. So that is going to be in micrograms per mil. 0.477. Of course, uh, we had diluted these before. And so it undiluted these. We should set up a new column, diluted. And I did this one, and I diluted it one to a thousand. So I need to multiply that by 1,000. Great. 
And this one I did 1 to 2,000. Or no, I was 1 to 1,200. So there's a little bit of spread there. And again, I did the same thing. 1 to 1,000. And... 1 to 1,200. So I'm multiplying by 1 over the dilution factor. Just multiply by 1,200. So we have a couple of values here. I usually like to average those. Just because the real value is probably somewhere in the middle. Okay. Average both of those. Great. Now, um, that's in micrograms per mil. So... I might also like to move those into migs per mil. That's often what we, we want to actually know is how many milligrams of protein are in our milliliter. And that is 1,000 micrograms per mil. So I divide by 1,000. And you can see that our two samples are around 0.45 migs per mil. So for every mil, there's about 400 my, uh, milligrams, which is good, or 0.4 milligrams, 400 micrograms. So those are our two samples. Now we report those. Now, that's an average, and we have a little bit of a difference here in our standard deviations. Um, so I might just like to figure that out. Standard deviation is always going to tell you a spread of our data points uh, when we do an averaging step. We could have also done the same thing up here when we did our averaging. That's what the error bars are here that tells us a little bit about our, our possibilities. And so what we can do here is this is going to be the average is 498 micrograms per mil plus or minus 30 micrograms per mil. Um, I'm also, I might just go ahead and just divide that by just so we get it in mix per mil. And so we would report this average as 0 0.498, 499 uh, plus or minus uh, 4987 plus or minus 0 0.0302 mix per mil. Great. So that is our sample one average. Averages should always be, if you have an, if you're averaging values like this, you should always use the standard deviation and apply it. So it's an average plus or minus some number, which tells you a little bit about the spread. Uh, for this one, we have 0 0.4597 plus or minus 0 0.084. and I like to round it to the same number per mil. And again, that, that plus or minus thing tells us a little bit about the uncertainty. Those are small numbers, then that really means that uh, our value could be that guy as high as that if we added it, or it could be mixed per mil minus standard deviation. So the real value of that thing is probably between these two numbers, between 0.52 and 0.46 mix per mil. Same thing down here. Our total could be as high as, a real value could be as high as 0.54, or it could be as low as 0.37. Um, so that tells you a little bit about the spread of our data, which is useful for us in actually assuming that our real value of our, our, our product that we're analyzing uh, is somewhere between those two. And we can compare that to the label in our so that's how you uh, plot out the Bradford standard curve and how you solve for concentrations. This is something you'll be doing nearly every week in this lab. So um, hope that helps.